Hey guys, it's Bart and Dave, and we have Sloan just below the camera, rocking away. Um, and you can see behind us, there hasn't really been much progress on the hanging of the frames. Yeah, doing anything for our apartment. No, but we have an excuse. Dave went back to work this week, so our schedules have been in flux. So, how was your week back? Uh, it was good in certain respects. It was nice to see my coworkers and you know do like my job. It's intellectually stimulating, but I was missing Sloanzy. And uh, you know we're still trying to figure out a routine, so we know you know who's feeding her in the mornings, who's sort of racing back from work in the afternoons to replace our nanny. Um, so yeah, we're still working through it. One of the questions we get all the time is, when did you guys decide you wanted to become parents? And the truth was, it wasn't this seismic moment in time, this thunderclap, when all of a sudden we were like, we must have babies. Um, <laughs> but it sort of gradually, <laughs> you're such a loser. <laughs> but it gradually ramped up you know, this desire to start a family over the course of our relationship. And what was awesome is that when we you know, got more serious, we kind of right away knew that uh, we had these options available to us, adoption and surrogacy. And in doing research, we also kind of realized just how lucky we were because a vast part of the world just doesn't have those options available to them in their, in their own country. So in our research, we started looking online to see what we could find. And we found this great map on Wikipedia that shows all the different countries in the world and what they allow or don't allow when it comes to surrogacy. So you see four different colors in front of you and the dark blue indicates that a country will allow commercial surrogacy. And that's just like the United States means that you're able to pay a surrogate for carrying your baby. Then goes light blue, countries like Canada, where Dave's from, which is altruistic surrogacy that is allowed. And what this means is you're allowed to have surrogacy but you're not allowed to typically pay the surrogate to carry the baby. Because of this, uh, there's really long waiting lists, so you could see years and years of people waiting in certain countries. Some of our friends in Canada have been waiting for a, a long significant time. amount of time. A lot of the world is gray, mm -hmm. and gray means that they just haven't formalized laws around surrogacy. It's too new of a concept, it hasn't really been discussed. And so on one hand, you know, it could seem almost tempting because there's all these countries where there aren't formal laws to sort of guide surrogacy one way or the other, but just going through the process, kind of knowing how many, you know, how many things could potentially go awry and how complex it is, you really do want a really solid legal infrastructure that's built around your surrogacy journey. So going back to the blues, sorry, Sloan is actually hiccuping right below us right now. Um, it's a little bit misleading because the map for instance shows that Russia is blue, but as Many of us know Russia is also not very tolerable of same-sex relationships to begin with, so same-sex surrogacy in Russia is going to be highly problematic. And then also includes countries like India where surrogacy is legal for Indian citizens who are opposite sex. So same-sex Indians or foreign nationals trying to have surrogacy in India is not allowed. So actually really in that dark blue territory, the only countries where same-sex commercial surrogacy is totally legal is the US, and even then it's state by state, not every state, and then sort of countries like Cambodia and Laos. So it's really pretty rare to find a country that is totally okay from a legal standpoint with same-sex commercial surrogacy. So another interesting thing is if you look at the map, some of the places that actually don't allow surrogacy are some of the most progressive for LGBT rights. And when looking into this, what's really interesting is there's a viewpoint in many of these countries that surrogacy shouldn't be allowed because it is renting of a womb and it's kind of um, disrespecting a woman's body. So it was definitely an interesting point of view. Um, we actually talked to one of our friends who's a Spaniard about this. It's something that's being debated in Spain right now. And I mean, the one thing that we pointed to is just the fact that there's a definitely a misunderstanding of the relationship like we had with our surrogate and how amazing she is and her her kids and her husband and the amazing things they did to bring Sloan into this world. Yeah, I mean it didn't wasn't a cold it wasn't a cold yeah. transactional relationship by any means. And part of that was our agency making sure that we were matched with a surrogate who really wanted the same things as we did. So when we look at this map, we're actually pretty optimistic. And it's because you know so many countries are trying to figure out their stance on surrogacy. The laws are changing so, so fast. Um, and yet you know, we fundamentally believe that you know, surrogacy for all, that families do come in all shapes and sizes. So the more examples that so we can put out there of these beautiful surrogacy created families and really the loving relationships that intended parents quite often develop with their surrogates, it's just gonna go a long way in influencing global lawmakers. So thank you very much and we will see you next week.
Bye, guys. Bye.